Okay, Warren, can you hear me? Loud and clear. Okay, uh, I don't know what happened. It was uh, We had a heck of a time getting on there. Uh, would get on and kick me back off. Okay, I think I'm going to try using headphones today uh, to see if I can understand you better. Okay, I I will speak as slow as I can. All right, say something to me. Let's see if I can hear you. Okay, can you hear me? I can hear you loud and clear. Good. I'm going to speak as okay. slow as I can. <laughs> okay, you don't have to talk that loud now that I have the headphones on. Okay, okay. Okay. Well, thank you for coming on, Raymond. Much appreciated. It's always a pleasure to have you on. Well, it's good to be here. I always like talking to you and all the people out there. Well, you're very popular. So it's, um, I think people are more, ever since COVID and everything, are much more aware of just government stupidity and the fact that energy is, and how much manipulation we're subject, being subjected to. And people are very keen to do something about it and take more charge of their health and finances and things like that. So. Well, that's good. You have more, uh, you're more in touch with the public than I am. Uh, I get a lot of mail, more than I can answer, but uh, no one is really telling me anything. They're always asking me something. So I don't really learn a whole lot about what's going on. Yeah. So, yeah, so really before we start, I'm just, it's always good to start by asking you, like, I know whenever we speak, different things are going on in the world energetically and you're measuring it from that thing. Have you noticed any changes in terms of like higher energy, more things like that? Have there been any major changes in the last nine months that you've noticed since we last spoke? Well, actually, I have noticed something. I cannot say that I am right, but I noticed the energy in the European countries had dropped dramatically, and also in the larger U.S. cities. Large U.S. cities. Uh, so yeah, it was um, it was quite um, it was quite a drop, really. And uh, now that occurred probably three months ago, and then part of the countries came back up. I'd worked on three countries. I won't say which ones. Uh, I'd worked on three countries. Uh, and they they came back up, but the rest of the Europe didn't seem to, and the uh, larger cities, and I didn't work on them all, mostly New York, uh, and maybe San Francisco, L.A., some of the better known ones, and they, the energy there, it's still low. And I'll tell you what I think is causing it. There is a tremendous amount of fear, and fear will bring down the energy. Yeah, yeah. So if you're trying to work on several million people and they all have fear, uh, I don't know that you're going to clean them up. Yeah. I understand. Can you speak a little bit louder or maybe go closer to a mic? I think since the headphones have gone on, you've, you're a bit quieter now than you were before. I can hear you, but barely. Well, uh, okay, I can talk louder. Is that okay? Yeah, that's that's much better. Uh, okay, that's fine. That's fine. I was afraid I was talking too loud. A lot of times I cannot really tell how loud that I am talking. So it's it's fine to tell me if I need to uh, uh, increase my voice a little bit. What Whatever we need, I'll try to accommodate. How many people do we have? Do we know? It says we've got 45 people here at the moment and growing, so... Okay, that's fine. Uh, now, you sent me a list of things, but I did not get it printed out. And while we're on the screen, I can't even find it. So uh, you'll just I'll have read to it give me to the you. questions as we go. Mm -hmm. Yep, so I'll just read, read it to you. So one of the first one was really, because for some people here, it's very new, this whole idea of changing your energy, changing your life, changing your cities. For some, that's kind of normal. We've been doing it for a while. Maybe just explain from a real beginner's perspective, like what's the whole basis behind like 
how is it that you can shift energy and change health, change people's lives, and even possibly make a change in some smaller cities? Like maybe just share a little bit about what that about the concept. Okay, let's start out <clears throat> with the basics. My work is based on some three very simple principles, mostly quotes by Einstein. The first one is, and I kind of revised what Einstein had said because at the time I made uh, this statement, I didn't really, uh, uh, wasn't really familiar with Einstein's quotes. But I found out later we were saying about the same thing. What I said is goes like this. My work is based on the idea that all things are composed of energy that include beliefs, thoughts, memories, and opinions. And the intelligent human mind, that means us, can transform energy. What we're saying here is we can take a negative energy, like free fear, greed, jealousy, hatred, and transform it into something beneficial, like peace, love, happiness. Now, I won't say it's always easy, but I, can, I will say that we have done this a lot of times. Now, that's the first principle. The second principle is energy is impressed upon matter. Thoughts and actions are energy. Our physical body is matter. So thoughts towards us will affect our bodies. Uh, if you think real bad about somebody, chances are uh, that you will have an effect on them. This, in one form, a real strong form, would be called a curse. Now, can we neutralize that? Anyone that is trying to do that to us? Yes. We have the ability to take whatever energy is directed at us and transform it into something good. Now, that's a, a pretty strong statement, but I really believe that's quite possible. And the third principle is Energy follows thought. Wherever you put your thoughts, you put your energy. And I tell folks, if you, the first rule of success is think of what you want, not what you don't want. Because whatever you think about, you are really putting energy out there to the universe for that to happen. And that is usually what you will attract to you. This is why I tell people, if you have physical ailments, don't call it my cancer, my arthritis, my pain, because you're claiming ownership to it. Your body listens while your mouth is talking, and it also listens while your head is thinking. So um, that's why the first rule of success is think of what you want instead of what you are afraid of or what you don't want. And there's another principle that really would help most people a lot, especially if you work with other people. A lot of folks work in a work environment that is not very pleasant. If they were had the information, and I'm about to give it to you, they could change that. And that, that is a quote from an old German philosopher back in the 1700s that said, see a person as they are, and they will get worse. See them as they could be, and they will improve. So this is the idea that I am putting out there to people who work in a hostile environment. As long as you complain about the people, talk about everything that's wrong, it's probably never going to get any better. You're simply feeding the problem. Yeah. So... Everything that I do is pretty much based on those simple principles. Yeah, I like that. Keeps it very, very, very simple. Like just focusing on what you don't want. And in fact, arthritis is a really good one. I I started getting symptoms of that years ago, and I had people trying to label me with that, and I'm like, no. I've just got some temporary stuff going on, but my body's fine. It will sort itself out. And it did. So. Okay. Somebody came, wrote in here, Karen, and says, don't we all? 
Well, not everybody. Uh, we've got some people smart enough not to do that, but most of them aren't. That's why I'm putting out this information. I'm trying to give you people uh, some information that will help you change your life. But you got to listen and you got to practice it. I may have missed some of the comments. I don't know. I just happened to notice that one. Yeah, that's the main one. So the other question that I asked that we mentioned was maybe just share about the principles of transforming energy because obviously you can do it in your head. You can do it by what you say. I noticed that you use a lot this thing called a pendulum, which you use. Yep. Um, and then you also use this thing called a boba. Maybe just explain what these actually do to people, like why, because I use them, but why do we actually use these things? Are they like magic wands or is it more just an instrument of our intention? Uh, it is, there's nothing magical about it. And I'm going to hold it up here so everybody can see it. I use a bullet on a chain, a pretty good sized bullet, okay? Um, now, all this is is a tool. It just like a wrench is to a mechanic, a hammer is to a carpenter. Uh, there's nothing magical about the pendulum or a bobber. There's simply a tool that will move. Uh, and like going to you and from you, that is a yes. Okay. If it goes across like this, this is a no. Those are, that's a real simple way to start. Learn how to get a yes and a no. Now, it's too complicated to get into on the air, but I have a video out there called Explaining the Doubting Chart, and it's at Raymond at RaymondGrace.us, and it will show you how to read a doubting chart, and you can not only find out if, uh, let's start out with food. Uh, you can not only find out if food is good or bad for you, you can find out to what degree it is. Not only that, we can use the same principle and neutralize the negative effect of a previous allergic food upon our body and eliminate allergies. And we have done this for years, and there's probably been hundreds and maybe even thousands of people, I can't really say because I don't keep track of them, that we've been able to help with this. Uh, in every class I teach, I show people how to eliminate uh, any allergies that they have. We probably have a 95% success rate. And yeah, I, it, but, is, but is there any magic in the bullet? No. The magic is in your brain. All this is is a tool to show you that something's happening. See, if, if folks just have a thought or an intent, most of them don't really believe it or don't believe anything is happening. If you are holding an object, like a pendulum here, and it moves, either going yes or no, or clockwise or counterclockwise, then that gives people confidence that what they're thinking is really working. Now, the end result is really the only thing you can believe, but this is a good place to start. So uh, don't start worshiping a pendulum uh, there's no power in it. The power is in your brain, but it's simply a tool. Just, just as long as you keep that in mind, you're fine. Now, don't spend a whole lot of money on buying a pendulum that someone has made up stories about that they might sell you one for two or $300 that is supposed to eliminate allergies. They may sell you another one uh, for yes and no, another one for financial uh, gain. Don't buy into this stuff, folks. It's simply a scam. Now, most people don't have the courage to get on the air and say this. I do because there's people out there, there's rip-off artists out there that will sell you anything you're willing to buy. Okay, I sell, bu I sell bullet pendulums for $21. If you don't have $21 and you don't want to buy it, tie a nut on a string. You do just as well. So don't, I, I try my best to keep people from getting ripped off by all the rip-off artists that's out there trying to get your money. And I just call it, I call it the way it is. I like that. I like that with the allergies because I, that's changed my life because I used to be a really strict eater before I met you. And 
I now do it on white bread. I eat like white bread. I have chocolate. I have all the kind of stuff I enjoy. And I don't know if you remember, Raymond, but my kids came to your workshop and they were the youngest um, attendees you'd ever had. And of course, they still to this day loved, loved the fact that you, you taught them how to make ice cream like healthy for them. They could eat all their McDonald's burgers. They could get all of their um, other stuff. And then, and their favorite thing was they still loved the fact you walked in with a gun and a knife. <laughs> if you remember. Yeah. Yeah. Some people get a little shook up over that. I have had uh, one couple walk out because I was wearing a gun and a knife to class. Uh, um, so um, that was okay. Uh, they wanted to leave. That was fine. I didn't really miss them. Yeah. So in terms of allergies, I mean, that's a good one, like on food. Can you maybe share a bit more and maybe we can demonstrate this? Like, because a lot of people have that belief that I'm allergic to sugar or it's bad for me or I'm allergic to, to this or that. Is that something we can talk a bit more and even maybe see if we can do something for the folks here? That would be interesting. Well, the more you talk about it, the more you tell your friends how allergic you are to something, the more allergic you will probably become. Why? Because you're giving energy to it. Now, I grew up with this. Uh, such as going to a, a family reunion, a picnic, it was uh, among certain types of people, um, and they would talk about what they were allergic to. Well, they never got any better, and then it, I mean, they died that way. Uh, as long as you talk about your problems, you will continue to empower your problems. So energy follows thought. It also follows speech. Speech is actually a bit more, a bit stronger. Your thoughts are mostly in your own mind. Whenever you speak, uh, everyone within hearing uh, distance of you uh, can, can be affected. So um, whether you, it's, okay, here's another principle that I work on. And this was uh, the industrialist Henry Ford. Whether you believe you can or believe you can't, you're right. So the people that believe they have allergies and they want to tell all their friends and neighbors about them, uh, they're probably going to keep them. Uh, we have helped, I would venture to say, hundreds, possibly a few thousand people get over allergies. I mean, what, what reason I don't know is whenever I teach a class, I'll just ask, how many of you people in here are allergic to something? And I'll just kind of go around the class real quick. What are you allergic to? You, 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 it'd be eggs. Uh, uh, maybe um, a carrot, uh, it could be uh, any kind of spices. Uh, it's amazing how many people are allergic to something. So what I do, I work to neutralize the negative effect of that food upon the person. And then I say, now go out tonight to a restaurant and order whatever you have been allergic to. If you survive, you get to come back tomorrow. We haven't lost anybody yet. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, that's really good. I mean, we can do that with just about anything. And I'm just curious, have you actually found or been in a position where you've done this as well? Because I've done it for people who've been badly affected by that awful vaccine um, that was spinning around the traps a couple of years ago. Because a lot of people have ended up with injuries and side effects. And I've been testing, you know, using energy to basically help people if I can of it. And some people reckon they've got some genuine help. Well, I don't like to talk about that very much, but I'll put it this way. If you've got results, I'd suggest you keep doing it. Because do I think it's possible? Well, if you can eliminate allergies, why couldn't you eliminate a vaccine? Yeah. Yeah, so the other one I've written down here is that I know when I went to your workshop in Virginia, one of the things you did I really still to this day found very useful was how when I used to heal myself, like let's say I have a knee thing going on or I've got some soreness in my shoulder, you would go through a bit of a testing protocol, like you would um, test for the spirit of the knee or spirit of the organ or just uh, deserve to death. Can you maybe share a little bit about that, like what's about what you do there or what's involved in that? 
Well, <clears throat> one of the things that I have been noticing for a few years, and it could have always been this way, and I just didn't notice it, and that is the spirit of love is leaving human bodies. And, really? But it seems to have in, it seems to have increased dramatically in the last I'll say five years. Um, so if a person has a problem with any part of the body, the first thing I do is check to see how much love is in that body part, whether it's a heart, lungs, liver, it doesn't matter. And in most every case, the spirit of love has gone. And you might ask, where did it go? And I really, I really don't know. Uh, I wish I knew what caused it, but I don't know. But we have an antidote for it. You can invite the spirit of love back into your body and always thank it. Just say, I give thanks for the spirit of love coming into my body. It's that simple. Now, you may need to do it every day. Uh, but here again, how long does it take? Five seconds. Is it worth five seconds of your time to improve your health? If you have to ask that question, you might as well just uh, turn the, the your computer off and go do something else because you're not going to get anything out of the rest of what we have to say. Uh, so uh, I get I get some dumb questions sometimes. Try to avoid them, but um, I give simple information, and if people can't follow it, it's not my fault. And I won't even try to persuade somebody to do it. I offer advice. or No, I offer information. And you can take it or leave it. Uh, but in the majority of cases, maybe all, when a, there is a body part that is not functioning, it's because it has no love. So I would suggest that you folks thank your body every night and every morning. You say, how do I do that? Well, I'll tell you how I do it. I simply give thanks for a strong, healthy body. It's that simple. You don't need long words and complicated phrases. The simpler you can make something, the more effective it's going to be. So uh, just give thanks for the spirit of love, the spirit of, uh, uh, and, and for a, a strong, healthy body. That's simple enough. I am older than most people. Most people died before they got as old as I am. But I'm also tougher than most. And that's always been a goal for me. I still run chainsaws. I work on a, run a small farm and uh, grow a big garden, build fence, string barbed wire uh, in the summer, run a herd of cattle. I'm doing this like I've always done. Why? because I believe I can. And it's like uh, people ask me a lot of times, how can you do something? Uh, like, how do you change the water? They ask me, how do you did you change the water for those folks out in Perth, Australia? Or how did you change the water for that, uh, those folks up in uh, uh, Alaska? There's a film out there at Raymond Grace YouTube channel that shows the people drinking water right after I energize it. People say, how did you do that? You do it with intent. What makes your my intent strong enough to do that? Because I have practiced it for 50 years. So I put a lot of time into this work, and it was worth it. What would have happened if I hadn't have done it? I probably wouldn't have lived as long. So uh, if you want to do what you might call miracles, you got to get serious about it. And really put your thought into it. And I have I have films on how to do all this stuff. I only have six films and uh, one DVD, no, one video. Six films, one, vi one video that is for sale. I'm giving away everything else. It's all at Raymond Grace YouTube channel. Our, mine and your past interviews are on there. Or at least I'm pretty sure they are. So uh, I like to make information available to people out there that really want to use it. So uh, I don't know if I've answered your question, but yeah. everything that is good or bad has a certain amount of intent. Uh, if you continue to talk about physical problems, that's where you put your energy. 
if I put my energy into cleaning up the water for you in that lake out there, that's where I put my energy. So, and, and it's simply based on the principle I said earlier, energy follows thought. So if folks would really let this soak into their brain and be more careful about what they think about, their life would improve. If you think about all the problems you have with the people at work, they're not going to get any better. You have to think of people getting along better. See, human thought has far more power than most people realize, and that's what I'm trying to get people to understand, is be careful what you think about, because that is what you are creating. Yeah, it's got me thinking. There was um, a guy I knew who ha was having major problems at his workplace, like people were having affairs, they were lying, they were mistreating each other. So he just started, he just cleaned up the place, like you say. He removed the spirits and the negative energies and from the place, and he just said, but from now on, my workplace is a place of integrity, harmony, and prosperity. And within the next week, he said literally all these Affairs got exposed, all of his corruption got picked up, people got fired, and within a week, the whole workplace was a whole different place just by changing intention and cleaning up the place. Well, that was a very intelligent man to do that, and I congratulate him. As a thing about it, Warren, we could do that worldwide if people were smart enough to do it. And you could change the world. You and I alone are probably not going to change the world. I can clean up a lot of water for people. Matter of fact, I've got probably a thousand people that I work with to give them uh, clean drinking water every day. I do it all at one time. I cannot do it individually. There's not enough time. So you have to do things as a group. Um, but have we made a difference? Yes. Um, but if more people, if each person would just do something, it would make a major difference. Oh, we've seen this if in our own. One of my things is if you do something, or if you do nothing, nothing will happen. If you do something, something might happen. Well, yeah, well, we're still doing, um, I think you remember during COVID, we were doing a lot of work on our state and seeing very profound changes happening as we would do it. And even now we've still got people, you know, with some amazing ladies and who get together every morning and they're working on our state like every day, um, you know, I think five or six days a week. So, and from what I can see, our energy is well, still pretty high. Well, uh, let me offer something. You may already be doing this. You probably are. I know that you're doing an exorcism. I'm reasonably certain you would be doing that. Not only on the people, but also upon their homes and their offices where they okay. work. Uh, and also remove the spirit of greed from the uh, from the work atmosphere, especially in government. That's good. No, I, that, we actually haven't been doing that. That's really good. So and remove the spirit of greed. You, do, uh, you can also remove the spirit of jealousy, spirit of envy, and transform it into the spirit of respect. Okay, I'm writing this down for our, our, for our people that we work with. So basically, we move that from the workplaces of all the people of the state. That's good. Really good. Okay. Well, uh, I don't know how many people you have working with you. I don't have anybody working with me. I work... I work alone, um, or pretty much. Every now and then I've got one person that helps me out on something, one or two. But um, you have a group of people, and I admire you for that. But use them. That's why I'm willing to do a talk show with you here and offer just some suggestions that I think would help you out, make your life easier. Uh, and what the successes I've had, I always share with you because I want you to have success and all the people that are working for you. And the more you believe in yourself, the more you will accomplish. People ask me how I do things. Well, first off, I do them with intent. 
That's the only, it, it doesn't matter what you ask, I do it with intent. But the second part of that is, I don't know, I can't. I like that. Just don't know that you can. I mean, because... So you know okay. Let me tell you how where I learned that. I learned it from a bumblebee. Because according to the what I have read, according to the law of aerodynamics, a bumblebee has a heavy body and short wings, and there's no way that it could get off the ground. That is in... Uh, where it's stated by in the law of aerodynamics. But the problem is the bumblebee never went to school to learn that he couldn't fly. So it does. So I've done a lot of things that everybody knows is impossible. But I was ignorant. I didn't know that. So I did it. It makes me think, do you remember sharing about eight years ago when I was at your workshop, there was some guy who you saw have a very bad accident in front of your eyes and you ran up there very quickly before anyone could get to him and you spoke to him and told him you're completely fine, even though he looked injured, you'll get you're completely fine, you've had no injury, and the guy just got up and was completely fine because you managed to get to him and program him before anyone else. Do you remember that? No, not right off, I don't. But I think I've got a few empty sp spots in my brain, maybe. But um, no, I don't. I don't remember that right off. Okay. Because yes, there's been a whole lot of studies on that, like why people get brain injuries, because the doctors say you've got a brain injury, so people believe it. And there actually was a story oh, of a guy. So, mm -hmm. yeah, there was a guy who actually had a brain tumor, who was given some water in a syringe and told that. This was a miracle drug, and the guy's brain completely healed. <laughs> yeah. um, uh, okay, but what you're doing, you are verifying that our belief system is the dominant factor that controls everything that happens to us. The yeah. good news is we have the ability to alter our belief system to our advantage. Yeah. I mean, what about with business? Because a lot of people, the biggest question I get asked about this is around prosperity, you know, like obviously if you get caught up with cost of living and growing costs and the economic situation, that will start to imprint on your beliefs. And before you know it, you're believing that you're going to struggle because that's what everyone's telling you. But I mean, yeah, so a lot of people are asking, how can you use like dowsing and energy sort of stuff to really increase your business or deal with, like you said, jealousy or competition or things like that, you know, competitors, false spirit guys, stuff like that. Well, again, you need to change your belief system. But I'll give you something I've never made public, simply because you're asking something. Excuse me, just a minute. <clears throat> Have to clear my throat. Um, I created an affirmation many years ago, probably 50 years ago. I will always have enough money to buy whatever I need, and I will pay for it with cash. I have never borrowed one cent of money in my life. See, I, like Warren, I, practice, I practice what I teach. When people, and I, I, I learned this from folks, when I hear people talk about how broke they are, uh, how impoverished they are, and their lack and limitation, I know they're probably never going to get over it because they have such a strong belief system. And even if you tell them that, they won't believe you. I've tried it. And uh, it's very difficult to break those old habits that go back for generations because they believe a lot of what their ancestors believe. And why? Because we're all a product of our ancestors. Well, I grew up in a what I would call a somewhat, excuse me. <clears throat> I did not, I'll put it this way. I did not grow up with wealth. Um, and life was somewhat of a struggle. It wasn't terribly impoverished, but it certainly wasn't that easy. Uh, so I set goals for myself back when I was a kid. 
I was setting goals when I was probably no more than five years old. I didn't even know what a goal was, but I would say, I'm just thinking about what I'm going to do. And I did it. Uh, I think I pretty, mu I pretty much accomplished all the goals that I set about uh, for physical things, like where to live, uh, owning land, uh, this type of thing. Because I would think about it every day. Now, at the time, I had no information on what you or I are discussing. All I knew to do was think of what I wanted. That's all I knew. So that's what I did every day. And I, you folks out there that have little kids, teach them to think about what they want. Don't teach them to be afraid of anything. Because start them out young or whatever. Ask them what you would really like to have in life. Well, you got to think about it, and you will attract it to you. Now, this works both positively and negatively. And each individual person has the choice of what they think. They can think about poverty or they can think about wealth. Now, somebody's writing in here uh, about um, their daughter about needing more confidence or something. I can't quite get all the, the text. Or, is that anything we need to discuss? Yeah, she's saying, my 14-year-old daughter is scared talking to anyone, and I'd love to help her with this and help her be more confident. That that was what she okay. asked. All right, I'll be glad to see if I can answer your question for you. I always like to help people with kids, um, because if you start them out now, right, you can change their life for the rest of their life. All right, imagination is a wonderful tool to use. Some people are even afraid of their imagination. All right, so what I would suggest you do is uh, even start this as a game. Imagine her walking out on stage at school and singing. Now, she may even be afraid to think about it at first. Well, you start at step one, have her to walk across the stage. Even if you have to walk with her, get one of her best friends to imagine, walk, uh, to imagine her walking with her. But you're using imagination. Then have her stand on stage and imagine she's singing. Have her imagine doing all kinds of things she is afraid of. Pretty soon she won't be afraid anymore. Why? Based on the first principle, or one of these three principles, energy follows thought. You can use imagination uh, for anything. That's how I trained my kids when she was little. Matter of fact, I wrote a book about it. Um, I taught her how to uh, learn her multiplication table. I taught her how to read with imagination. I had her to imagine that we had created a little school. She had a unicorn for a teacher. And the, teacher, the unicorn would write on the board in different color chalk. Whenever you are working with kids, you use color and you use movement because it gets their attention. It has to be somewhat exciting. So I would have her write in red, one plus one equal two, two plus two equal four in blue, then uh, four plus four equal eight in green. Change the color of everything as you were doing it. If she was spelling words, have her spell one word with one color, the next word with a different color. It, uh, it she learns so much easier that way. But having a unicorn for a teacher was one of the best things that was more exciting for her. She wanted to imagine that. I always encouraged imagination. And as a result, the day after she got out of college, she started her own business. She rented a building, bought a business license, got her phone installed, and started a dance studio. That's where I teach my classes now. And she has a full house for, uh, uh, for her dance classes because I taught her how to run a business. 
I taught her how to, uh, if you were, we would pretend she had a store. And I'd give her a catalog to pick out what she wanted. And then we'd look at the price of it. And then you had to figure out how much you had to sell it for to make a profit. I was teaching her things like this before she ever went to school. Actually, I never sent her to school until she was 14. I have to say, Raven, on that, because taking my kids to your workshop and um, doing and getting them involved in all of my stuff, still to this day, it's changed their life. Like my oldest son, William, you'd be very pleased to hear that he he now runs his own healing kind of work, very similar to Ed Stratcher. Um, he now has a lot of clients, and he still to this day says he names three people that got him started in his journey, apart from me, and you were one of them. He said someone who got him to believe that he could do it. And he he just believes he can do it. So he sees people get healed. He he works he works with people. That's his full-time business now. Well, congratulate him and tell him I'm proud of him. Yes. And he still likes the fact he can make ice cream healthy. That's the other thing he said to tell you. <laughs> well, there's nothing wrong with that. So do I. I have two little grandkids. Every time they come to see me on weekends, I always make sure I have plenty of ice cream for them. Yeah. So uh, it's um, uh, uh, I don't have any problem at all with doing that. We can we can make food healthy. I mean, it's just it's just something we do. Yep, yeah, we can do what we want. So I've got some questions coming through. I've asked people to give their questions, so please feel free to ask your question, everyone. Okay, someone else has asked a question, Raymond. That. Yeah, I'm sure this would be something we'd both like to help if we can. Um, 20 year old nephew is not speaking due to autism. Are there any commands or ways we can help him or that we can assist the situation? Well, I don't think I've got an answer for that because I've never had a case like that and I don't really know. However, I would say the same thing that I said a while ago. Imagine her speaking. Now, if I remember correctly, and I, I, my memory may be a little foggy, but there was a very intelligent man named Napoleon Hill. He was, he was an American. As uh, a matter of fact, he was born right across the mountain, about 50 miles from where I live. And he was a very extraordinary man. Uh, I, he was born probably around uh, early 1800, or late 1800s, I guess. So he died, I think, in 1970. But Napoleon Hill, I remember reading this, that his son was born without ears, a deformity. And the doctor says, well, there's nothing can be done. He said, oh, yes, there is. And every day, Napoleon Hill would imagine ears growing on this little kid. And you know what? He grew a set of ears. Now, I remember reading that. I cannot verify that as true, but I, that, that's what I've read about him. Uh, but he was a very intelligent man, uh, extremely so. Um, so I would just have to say that imagine the person uh, speaking. Have them starting out, if he can make any kind of a sound at all. And then uh, see if they can imitate you on a sound that you would make, or a word that you would say. Now, I don't know that this will work. Also, in that case, let's see if there's a brain deficiency, and there is. Actually, it's quite serious. I don't know if I can change this or not, but I'm willing to give it a try. So let's see if we can align the appropriate areas of the brain in such a manner to enhance the ability to speak. Now, everything I do is simple. Now, I'm going to hold the pendulum up here so folks can see it. It's going around like this right here. See, the length of time and velocity at which a pendulum spins indicates the amount of energy required to correct the problem. This is a serious uh, case right here. This is not an easy case at all. But let's see what we can do. What you do, you set your intent, which is what I just did. I did it verbally so everybody could hear it. And then I want to send the energy to accomplish that intent. That's where the pendulum comes in handy. 
Uh, is there any magic in it? No, not at all. But it to- tells us how long to focus on what we want to accomplish. And it's slowing down. Okay. Now, in all honesty, I do not know if I've helped or not, but it didn't take me a few moments to try. So what's the next one? Next one. Well, while we're waiting for questions, one question that I had in my list was, what about like a lot of what about things like investments or business opportunities or integrity around that like i know you can often check like businesses investments the integrity of something i mean can you make some comments on that right i'll be glad to because there's a lot of rip-off artists out there in the world and uh, the first thing you do before doing business with anybody whether it's an investment uh, or what it is. If it, if it includes money, check their integrity on a scale of zero to 100, plus or minus. And then, to be uh, a little more precise, check their integrity toward you. Your integrity, Their integrity may be different toward people they like and people they don't like. So just check their integrity towards you. Check their level of greed. If it's real high, I wouldn't want to deal with them because I wouldn't trust them. Uh, And then you can always ask, what is the overall result of me making this investment, whether it's in the stock market or wherever it is you're putting your money? What is the overall result of this? That's a pretty good question on any kind of a decision you're going to make. And then uh, you use your down, your pendulum. If it spins to the right, zero to 100%, it will tell you to what degree it is. Uh, 10% uh, positive is not good enough. Uh, I probably wouldn't want to do anything under 70% positive. Uh, and if it goes anywhere to the left, don't even touch it. It's, uh, it's a bad deal. That means you're going to lose your money. Now, in all honesty, this depends upon your accuracy in doubting and your skill. If you've never doubted before, then don't try to use doubting to make a decision on investment. That's too risky. Don't do that. Uh, So uh, if it's a company, you check the integrity of the entire company. Um, uh, Investment firm, whatever it is. Just check the integrity of everything uh, overall. That's the that's the best thing you can do. And then ask, what's the result of me investing my money in this? And see what kind of answer you get. But I, I wouldn't invest anything under 70% positive. That's good. And you can also check things, because one time you checked about being affected by false spirit guides or competitors or something. Can you maybe share about that? Because false spirit guides... For business and relationships can be a horror. Well, they are. And this is something I stumbled on to. The reason that some people don't get along with the people they married or even with their kids is because their spirit guides are not compatible. Now, this is really not their fault. Uh, I learned this from an old Indian uh, friend of mine who told me one day, she said, if you're trying to do healing on someone and your spirit guides don't like their spirit guides, you won't be able to help them. And I thought, well, this is probably why husbands, wives, parents, kids, bosses, and employees don't get along. The spirit guides don't like each other. Well, what I found was that I could, in some cases, change the attitude of the spirit guides. For example, I could take away greed from them and give them uh, generosity. Uh, But sometimes you don't have to even do it that uh, that. Like uh, a couple that's always fighting with each other. All I do is take away all of the characteristics that affect their peace and harmony and turn those characteristics into peace and harmony. If that And we've had some real good results. I'm not going to say we've had perfect results, but we've had good results with it. And it's, um, 
it works well. I've used it in the workplace before. Uh, I've used it various places around the world. And the aggressive person will usually improve. Now, sometimes they haven't. There's some people it doesn't seem like anything is going to work on. But uh, in many cases, it has worked quite well. But then again, it may need to be reinstated. You may have to do the same thing again next week. The people may backslide, uh, revert back to their their old habits again. So don't think that just because you dial something one time, it's going to be corrected forever. That's not necessarily true. See, I, or what I try to do is just tell people the way it is, what's really true and what isn't. And uh, I've never give anybody a sales pitch on, on things. It's like, this is my experience. You may have a different experience. But I do like to put out information, I like to talk to you and your group, to give them information that will uh, help them improve their lives. If we could do this on a large enough scale, then we improve the world. Yeah, I like that. So what other things, like I know one of the things that with dowsing and intention that you were doing with me, Raymond, was, um, and my kids love this one, was how we could use it with airports and clearing them up and basically just, yeah, just anything like that. What are some of the other things that you find you can check check intention for in that, like airports, traffic, things like that? Well, uh, which route to take if you're driving somewhere? Now, with airports, first thing you do is check to see if there's any entities there. And if they are, get rid of them. And especially if the airport uh, personnel, the people that are checking your baggage and so on as you go through, you definitely don't want anybody possessed that you're having to deal with there. Now, but also take away any uh, uh, bully archetype. See, there are people out there that are just naturally born bullies. They just like to... Uh, intimidate other people. It makes them feel, apparently, it makes them feel good about themselves. Uh, so you want to take the uh, archetype. The word archetype is a trait or a characteristic that affects a person's behavior. So you want to take away any aggressive or bully archetype from these people. See, uh, I wish people would learn this and teach their kids this uh, going to school because they can eliminate the bullies in school. So, number one, you depossess them. Number two, take away aggressive archetypes. And uh, then uh, you can take away any uh, characteristics that would cause any kind of conflict and transform all that into peace. Now, you may need to use different words on this, but that's the general overall idea. And I've done this for people before. And they go through the airport with no problem whatsoever. Now, I don't fly anymore. I haven't been on a plane for 18 years, and I don't ever intend to get on another one. So I don't ever have a need for this myself, but I'm, uh, I have friends that will not fly anywhere until I clear up the airport for them. And I'm very glad to do it for them. You see, the, I, the bottom line is we have an intelligent mind that we could make life a lot easier if we just learned how to use it. Now, thank you, Raymond. That's very useful. So if someone's given a question, I don't quite understand it, but I'll say it. I, someone said, I've just started to get into um, sacred codes or something and use dowsing to see what number comes up to concentrate on for the day. Does Raymond know anything about this? I'm presuming the answer is no, Raymond. Is that would would that be right? No, I I have no idea what they're talking about. Yeah, me neither. Okay. Someone no, asked. We need to leave off like that. All right, go ahead. Yeah, someone else asked a bit. It's a long question, but I'll simplify it down. Someone wrote, "What can I do to negate the effects of other people I work with who seem to keep manifesting problems for me despite my intentions otherwise?" You know, so. Any any tips for her there? Like she's had an example that she had some pet chickens and put them outside. And then, yeah, the, the cat got in and ate her chicken. So basically she's just getting a lot of bad stuff happen to her and she thinks it's because of the, the effects of other people that she's working with. 
Well, I don't really know who this is. don't know anything about them. But when you attract that much negativity, you probably because you've been putting energy into it. Because if you think you're a victim, then you will find people that will make you a victim. So I'd suggest she check to see if she has any victim mentalities. The problem is most people can't check themselves because they 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 will un maybe even intentionally change the way the pendulum moves, but. Uh, Generally speaking, when someone constantly has problems, it's because they have constantly made bad choices. Yeah, someone's asked about in-person training. I think you, you do regular workshops on your website in America, don't you, Raymond, which people can check? Uh, not, at that, not at this time, we don't. However, we are in the process, but it's been a slow process of putting out nine hours of information. I, I've already got it filmed, and I've watched it. It seems to be pretty good. I don't think I can improve on it any. Nine hours of information that we're going to put out and give people uh, opportunity to watch it for like a month. Uh, it's a better deal than what we offered before or when we would offer it for a week. So this one, we're going to see if we can do a little bit better on it give people more time to watch it we just haven't got it all together yet but when we do it will be on our uh, on the foundation website it will be in my newsletter uh so if you don't get my newsletter go to raymondgracefoundation.org and sign up for it it's free matter of fact one is probably going out today uh so also out there i need to throw out this uh, idea. Um, a lot of people think I can solve all their problems for them, and that's not necessarily true. And I am so overwhelmed with people, I don't really have time to read the mail. So don't contact me wanting me to find your lost dog or stray cat or something like that because I'm going to hit the delete button. I'm not being rude. I'm just telling you the way it is. Uh, so when I, when you get as many thousands of emails as I do, you got to be very selective which one you're going to answer. Yeah. Sounds good. I'm just giving everyone the link to your um to your one. So RaymondGraceFoundation.org is that right? That is to sign up for a newsletter or to sign up for an energy clearing that I do for people every morning. Yeah. Every morning, I do an energy clearing, quite extensive, for all the people that sign up. It costs $25 a month. That's about 80 cents a day uh, to do an energy clearing for your home and all the people that live in it. And there's a whole long list of stuff that I go through. Uh, but this does not include personal correspondence between you and me. There's just not time to do that. I have, I have to work as a group, and I work on it the same way that I do in class. I don't know who the people are in class. I don't know where they live, but I can clear the entire class by intent. Well, that's the way I do the energy clearing, and we get really good results on it, if I can believe the mail. All right, somebody's got here, it'd be great if I did something, but I can't read the rest of it. No, that's good. So any last questions anyone got? Oh, yes. There's one question by one of our, actually one of our ladies, Raymond, who does a lot of the energy work on our cities, Judith. She's asked, it would be great if possible for Raymond to do a demonstration on how to clear pain from the body using the spirit of love. Is that something you, you could possibly, we could possibly try and do now? Well, or, 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 yeah, that's real simple. Now, I'm not going to tell you it's perfect because it isn't, but it works a lot. Uh, I take any and all negative emotions within the body and turn them into love. That's it. There can be a total of 60 negative emotions within the human body. Uh, so that, that's uh, the fi finding of this. I'm trying to remember his name now. He wrote the emotion code. I have trouble remembering this man's name, even though I know him fairly well. Uh, but I have trouble remembering names sometimes anyway. 
but he discovered that there were uh, 60 negative emotions possible in the human body. I'd been finding that many, but I didn't really believe it was possible. So I took his advice, and sure enough, uh, I, I found out that, that I must have been right all the time. They were 60 negative emotions in a lot of bodies. Now, that's a lot of emotions, but, uh, oh, Bradley Nelson, Dr. Bradley Nelson is his name. He wrote a book called Emotion Code, and he discovered those and listed them. Once I found that, I think, well, I must have been right and didn't know it. Uh, so you take all the negative emotions within a body and within your home and within your workplace because you're affected by all of them, and you transform all of this into uh, self-love. So that's uh, probably the shortest and probably the only answer I can give you. But can you do it for other people? Yes, if they're accepting of it. You can't really help people if they don't want help. Yeah. I like that one. Yes, and the last comment I'll make is that I know one of your big things that you've done, and someone's written here, the energy clearings are so amazing. My water for my tap is now really good. So that's some feedback for you, Raymond. Your water clearings seem to be having a good effect for people. I really am. Thank you for commenting on that. I appreciate it. That lets me know it works. It lets other people know it works. We're cleaning up water all around the world, a little bit at a time. We haven't cleaned up all the oceans yet, but we are making progress. The biggest progress we've made, to my knowledge, was when you asked me to clean up the lake that uh, provides water for Perth, Australia. And I got 27 emails that day thanking me for giving them good water. And there was only 40 people from Perth that was on the, on the show. Yes, I remember that. So, we, I saw yeah, a profound change in the water. Yeah, when you asked me about that, I thought, boy, this is going to be a real uh, big job to do. And it was. But we, the good news is we did it. So uh, I'm still doing this, not quite to that extent, but uh, a few people at a time, and for everybody that signs up on our energy clearing list, I do my best to make sure that you have good water. Yeah, you're getting comments here, Raymond. Another one says, thank you, Raymond. Our water is now also good, very grateful. So it seems to be making a pretty big difference to people. Yeah, I recognize that name on there. He writes me every now and then. Yeah. Sometimes I recognize people's names as they come across the screen. Yeah, it's always good to know your your work is making a difference. I and know that it's helping people, and certainly water needs a good cleanup. And I'm sure you've heard of Emoto's work. How Emoto just by doing energy intention on water, what it, what he did. Yeah, um, I won't say much about that. I don't think. I don't think we got all the truth on that. Fair enough. Well, no, thank you, Raymond. So, look, um, really appreciate you coming and speaking today and sharing your wisdom with the folks here today. And I'm, I'm sure everyone else here is extremely grateful. And thank you, thank you again for your time and getting up six thirty in the morning. Well, I appreciate the invitation, and uh, it's always enjoyable to speak to you and the folks there. Uh, we get a lot of business from the folks in Australia, and uh, we appreciate your business. And uh, we, we're not able to ship you physical stuff anymore due to the outrageous uh, postage rates. But uh, as far as getting uh, did, uh, downloads on our films, yeah, we can still do that. That's not a problem. And I made arrangements. I don't. I can't give you. A, uh, information right off because I don't have it in my head, but uh, the bobbers I had got so expensive to send to Australia, uh, we ship them in bulk to someone in Australia. I put that in a newsletter here recently, but I can't give you address right off, but anyway, you can, you can. they are available in Australia without having to order from me. They got to where the shipping cost more than the merchandise did. No, thank anyway, you. Go ahead. Now, I was going to say two final things I do want to mention before I forget. Number one, everyone, please make sure you sign up for Raymond's newsletter. Like if you go to his site, um, it's a great newsletter. And like he said, he does a daily energy clearing for $25 a month. I mean, 
uh, as well. We're time on that myself. And the second thing is tomorrow night, for those who are interested, I've got, I'm putting the, I've just put a link in the chat. I'm actually doing a secret of the city yoga, yogi secrets of manifestations and miracles, something which I've been studying and getting heavily into in recent times and reading some of the great texts. So I'll be sharing that tomorrow, sharing a little bit more on this stuff. I mean, Raymond's a bit simpler and better than me in some areas, but I'm just going to be going into some of the more in-depth stuff around that and just some of the, you know, teachings in that area. So if you want to come tomorrow night, the link is there and please take down the link. But any, any final thoughts, Raymond, to share? Sorry, Raymond, is there any, any final thoughts you think we can share with the folks or final tips of wisdom? Uh, no, I just uh, really appreciate the opportunity to talk to you folks. And we covered everything pretty good. You had very intelligent questions. And uh, I think the think our talk went well today. So I uh, just thank you for the opportunity. And uh, I guess it's evening there. So everybody have a good evening. Yep. And thank you again, everyone, for being here. Thank you, Raymond, for coming. Um, we'll be sending our emails to everyone with the, with the details. And I'll look forward to seeing all of you next time. Thanks, Raymond. Uh-huh. See you.